Great God, thank you. Waka guta galato. Love me, the love of the Pupa. Waka guta galato. Father, we bless you. The earth is your footstool. Heaven is your throne. Waka guta galato. Beloved, we come into this wonderful time in the presence of God. No one is great but you. No one is great but you, Lord. Beloved, we commence with thanksgiving unto the Lord. We are getting on to some prayer points as the Lord enables us into this wonderful hour, calling on the name of the Lord and glorifying His name. Beloved of God, it's a joy to know that if we keep at the place of prayer, the Lord is enabling us to be able to rise. Remember our theme verse, Nehemiah chapter 4, verse 20. When you hear the sound of the trumpet, gather there to me. The Lord will fight, will fight for us. We thank God that the Lord is enabling us to come to a place overcoming the fear of man, overcoming the love of money, overcoming the challenges of trouble in the world. Tonight we're going to be praying several prayer points from scripture that God is going to enable us by his Holy Spirit. So as we commence, I want you to prepare your heart and say to the Lord, open my eyes that I may see wonderful things out of your law. Open my eyes, Lord. Give me revelation. Give me vision. Give me provision in the name of Jesus. Mighty Father, as we commence in this time, we ask for vision, we ask for provision. We ask that God, you may give us wisdom. We ask that God, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Lord, we are trusting in you that you're going to give us victory in this day. You're going to give us answers to prayer in this day. You're going to grant us, Lord, even victory when we come to your presence. Father, we pray for the very prayer points in your heart. We pray for the very prayer points in your heart. We come to seek not what is in your hand, but we come to seek what is in your heart. Lord God Almighty, we pray that you will help us to intercede and even to pray on target concerning matters that are, in, that are heavy as burden in your heart, that you want to give us burden. Father, as your word says in the book of Matthew chapter 11, verse 28, the Lord, come unto me, all you that labor, and I will give you rest. Um, you say that, Lord, in the book of Matthew eleven twenty eight, that learn from me, for my burden is not easy and my yoke is light. We come to bring our shoulder to you, that, God, you may put the burden of the Lord upon us today. Grant us burden of you, O God, in the mighty name of Jesus. 
Beloved of God, you cannot bear the burden of the Lord if you are heavy laden. He says, come unto me, those who are heavy laden, and I will give them rest. I want you to lift up your voice and tell the Lord, Father, I enter into your rest. Give me rest, Father, from anxiety, from fear, from the fear of man. It could be fear of the examiner. You have an exam. It could be fear of the, or, you know, something that you're doing in your business or fear of somebody that you, you owe something. You need to overcome that fear in the mighty name of Jesus. You need to overcome that fear. You need to lay that burden at the foot of the cross and take up the burden of the Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. So some of the prayer points we're going to pray tonight. I pray that you stick till the very end. We only here for 60 minutes and the Lord will help us. Actually, there are less than 60 minutes now, about 44 minutes. And we thank God that as he helps us in this session, this is one of the most amazing sessions because we are able to, to pray into the calendar day. You know, there are times and seasons that belong to the Lord, but we know that midnight is the time when we see an exchange of the day, that there is a day turning into night, and we are turning into the next day. The first watch of the night starts at 6 p.m. Second watch of the night starts at 9 p.m. The third watch of the night, according to the Bible, starts in the midnight watch. And the fourth watch of the night is at 3 a.m. And that one we begin again, the cycle of the day watches at 6 in the morning and at nine in the morning we have the second watch and at 12 in the day we have the third watch and then at three we have the we have the uh, we have the fourth watch of the day and then after that we start all over again with the first watch of the night starting at six now these times are not have not been set so that we may pray only on those times the book of first thessalonians chapter 5 verse 17 it says that we ought to pray we devote ourselves to pray always. We need to pray always. We need to pray always. And we began to deal with things in our foundation. We began to deal with things in our foundation. And we thank God that the Lord is helping us. One of the things that will happen when you are dealing with your foundation is that the Holy Spirit will begin to highlight areas of your character that need to be molded by Him. And you need to replace those negative characters of your personality with the fruit of the holy spirit so we are going to be praying in this way in the mighty name of jesus and we thank you because we are you know purpose to do this and also we're going to be praying on target the bible says that the prayer of a righteous man availeth much i want you to be in the place of a righteous man a righteous woman i want you to align yourself to a place where you can say Bring the prayer points. Bring the prayer points. So we title this session Prayer Points. We are, titled, we are titling this session Prayer Points. And that is what we are going to do in the next hour. So you are cap as we enter into the midnight gate, I want you to bless the Lord. Thank Him for this program. Thank Him that this altar is raised unto Him. As we hear the sound of the trumpet, we begin to tell the Lord, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. As we hear the sound of the trumpet, we say that, Father, as your word declared in the book of Nehemiah chapter 4 and verse 20, when you hear the sound of the trumpet, rally there to me, the Lord will fight for you. Come on, begin to praise the Lord. Begin to thank Him in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we come at the gate of midnight. We declare it, O oh my Father. Let God arise. Let God arise. Let God arise. 
and his enemies be scattered in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus. Let God arise. Let God arise. Let God arise. Let God arise in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. enemies be scattered and all the righteous be glad yes let them rejoice with gladness God has triumphed mightily let God arise let God arise let God arise. Our Father and our God, at this time, this point in time, we commit our soul, our spirit, our body, Father God, to aligning to the purposes of God. Let God arise. And all his enemies be scattered in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let the Lord arise. Let the Lord arise. Let the Lord arise. The Lord arise. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Isaiah chapter 66 is where we come. You know, one beautiful thing about the book of Isaiah is that it is actually a Bible within a Bible. The book of Isaiah has 66 books, just like the entire Bible. It has 66 books. And one thing about this wonderful book of Isaiah, it's a messianic prophet. It's a major prophet. And God has enabled us to be able to come this morning to pray concerning judgment and hope and most importantly to pick some prayer points from here even as we continue to uh you know pray according to the purposes of god i am malcolm david taking you through this session and i thank god that he has given me capacity and ability to be able to do this and to be able to lead us as the lord enables us isaiah 66 verse 1 this is what the lord says Heaven is my throne, and the earth is my footstool. Where is the house you will build for me? Where will my resting place be? Has not my hand made all this? And so they came into being, declares the Lord. This is the one I esteem. He who is humble and contrite in spirit and trembles at my word. Isaiah 66 verse 2, it says, Has not my hand made all these things? And so they came into being, declares the Lord. This is the one I esteem, he who is humble and contrite in spirit and trembles at my word. In the book of Ezra chapter 9 and verse number 4, Ezra 9 and verse 4. It says, Then everyone who trembled at the words of God of Israel, the, the, then the one, everyone who trembled at the words of the God of Israel gathered around me because of this unfaithfulness of the exiles. And I sat there appalled until the evening sacrifice. Beloved of God, this is the one the Lord esteems, he who is humble and contrite in spirit. And trembles at his word. Isaiah 57 and verse 15. Isaiah 57 and verse 15. It says, For this is what the high and lofty one says. He who lives forever, whose name is holy. I live in a high and holy place. But also with him who is contrite and lowly in spirit. To revive the spirit of the lowly. Beloved of God, as we are gathered here tonight, 
we are gathered for prayer points. And the beautiful thing about prayer points is that when you pray the will of God, it is able to, you know, the Lord is able to help us. You see, Isaiah 57, 15, Isaiah 66, 2. The first prayer points. Isaiah 57, 15, it says, This is what the high and lofty one says. He who lives forever, whose name is holy, I live in a high and holy place. But also with him who is contrite and lowly in spirit, to revive the spirit of the lowly and to revive the heart of the contrite. Beloved of God, I want you to go before the Lord and pull down every form of arrogance, every form of pride, every in every form of uh, you know uh, every form of lifting yourself up, conceitedness. We want to pull them down in the name of Jesus. We want to pray that we will be usable in the hands of our master. What is use of a lion in a cage? What is use of an elephant in a zoo? If you are in the Western world, you may just be looking at that species inside a zoo, inside the zoo. But if you come into Africa and you come into Kenya specifically and you see our lions and you see our elephants without bound, without boundaries, moving around. Sometimes the elephant are just, they look at a tree, they don't like it. And all of a sudden they begin to just scratch on the tree. And within no time, the elephant is going to knock that tree down and break it like it's a twig. Because the elephant is in its natural inhabitants. In the same way, the lions will decide to mark a territory as large as they can go. And anything else that gets into that territory will be in trouble. Now, you and I have been made by the Lord to be high above every other voice, every other law, every other kind of authority. To, re to be seated with Christ. But the most incredible thing is that the only way we sit with Christ is with the parameters of holiness. Arrogance cannot be in the same place with the Lord Jesus Christ. Arrogance cannot be in the same place with our Lord Jesus Christ. Pride is detestable to him. At this midnight hour, let's put some oil in our lamps. Because when the Lord comes, nobody knows when the bridegroom is showing up. At midnight, woo, glory to God. As the bridegroom showed up, there were five foolish virgins and there were five wise virgins we are the wise we have oil in our lamp i want us to take the very obvious position that pleases the lord and that is the position of meekness is the position of of contriteness is a forgive is the position of humbling ourselves i want us to lift up our voices to the lord and tell him, my Lord, my Father, we call on your name tonight. We call on your name tonight. Oh, my Father, I humble myself. I humble myself before you. I humble myself before you. In the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I humble myself. I humble myself. I humble myself. I empty myself of myself. In the name of Jesus. I come with the specifications of pride. In this world, my Father, without Christ, I am but full of all the conceit in the world. I am full of sexual immorality. I am full of debauchery. I am full, oh God, of selfishness and witchcraft. My Father, it's only until the Holy Spirit fill me with the new fruit that I am full of love, I'm full of joy, I'm full of peace, I'm full of long suffering, I'm full Lord of kindness, I'm full of goodness, I'm full of faithfulness. Hallelujah! Father, we invite the fruit of the Holy Spirit to take over our life this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus, this night, in the name of Jesus, we rededicate our lives to you, O oh God. We give our lives to you, Lord God. Even as we enter into this lovely day, we enter with this lovely day with thanksgiving, with knowledge that you dwell among the contrite. You dwell among those, or those, those that walk in humility, Father. I want us to pray.
and ask the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, we ask for your help and strength to pray through, to break through this day in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I want you to pray until the burden lifts. Whatever situation that you may be facing, may the Lord give you burden to, you know, may the Lord give you uh, strength. May the Holy Spirit give you strength that you may be able to pray through, to break through in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord says, pray without ceasing, pray without ceasing, pray without ceasing in the mighty name of Jesus. I want you to pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Pray without ceasing in the mighty name of Jesus. Pray without ceasing. Hallelujah. Pray without ceasing. Hallelujah. Pray without ceasing. First Thessalonians 5, 17. Pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. It says rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Beloved, this is First Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 17, verse 16 to 18. Verse 16 to 18. Beloved, you may want to ask me, so how do you pray without ceasing? I want to give you some practical ways of how to pray without ceasing. You are there, you need to do some activity for two hours. And in the two hours, you must just do two hours. You don't have a choice. In the two hours, you may choose to just take your phone and start scrolling through the social media. And within no time, you will have finished one hour. Just like that. Looking at things that may not add value to you. I know, yes, you want to know what's happening in the world. But you have just lost an hour of your life that cannot come back. Probably you're on a trip. You are traveling long, far distance. And you know in the, oh my goodness, I love those missions. Because when the long missions, the longest drive I've ever been so far was 10 hours. 10 hours. From Nairobi to Kapenguria. That was, <laughs> that was the most longest time I spent in prayer. Because I had 10 hours on the road. And every stop. Everywhere I stopped to put fuel in the chariot, every place I stopped to put fuel in the chariot, everybody around that chariot got born again. I thank God because sometimes I could take photos and videos. Every, and literally, literally, without me stepping out, I just asked the person who is putting the fuel, Hey, ungependa kumpatia yesu maisha yako, mimi naenda kapenguria. The person says yes, and his colleagues join, and all of them, the, the chariot is surrounded by four or five people, and we are there, they give their life to Jesus, I write down their name and their number, and I move on with my prayer, I continue praying, I continue praying, there was one time, as I was continuing to pray, in the journey I'm just praying, I'm just praying, I'm not getting my mind thinking of anything else, just pray, thanking God, how he's good. I look at different things. I see a, a, a sign of the road written black spot here. I pray and tell God, Father, today, no bloodshed on this road. In the name of Jesus. There are so many prayer points everywhere, beloved. There are so many prayer points. You look at your television with the news coming up. What are you seeing? Instead of replying and saying what everybody's saying, pick up some prayer points from there. Pick up some prayer points. The quick testimony to Kapenguria. So we had, had arrived at a place near Eldoret. And on that day, there was an operation on that road. Every vehicle was being arrested by the, by the police. Because for some reason or another, you have done a crime of overtaking on a yellow line or you have gone past the speed limit. And some of those speed limits were just impossible to keep, like... You know, some place where you are getting good momentum. You are being told there you should go 60, there you should go 50. And other days they do nothing. So when I arrived at this stage, this, the roadblock was not the one that you go around. No, the road was blocked, all of it. So the policeman said he was waving very much and he had a notebook. He was looking at the notebook. I had not overspared, I was sure. But he was stopping me, he was stopping me. So I took down the window. And inside the chariot, there was a song by Nathaniel Bassi. 
he was singing, the king is coming with glory and with majesty. The police officer looked at me and he said, Abariako Bishop, that's what he called me. I did not tell him to call me anything. He said, Unenda wapi na mwambia na kimbia kapenguria sahi kanisani. He said, ah, this is... <laughs> How do you go to church in kapenguria? Hey, beloved, I want you to catch the fire. Pray without ceasing in the name of Jesus. You have more than enough time. You have more than enough opportunity. Beloved of God, what does it mean to pray without ceasing? Pick this prayer point. It says rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances. For this is the will of God in Christ for you. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 to 18. This Bible verse is popular. Many Christians refer when discussing how we can pray without ceasing. The Greek word ceasing in this verse literally means to pray uninterruptedly and without omission or, or intermission. Hakuna kusimamisha maombi. How can we pray and talk to God without stopping or without omission? God knows that we have daily tasks. God knows that we have duties that need tending in our lives. But as much as we may want to, we cannot stay in prayer closets all day. We have to go to, go to work. We have to jobs to do. We have people to take care of. Praying without ceasing may seem like an impossible task. But think about it. When was the last time we told ourselves to breathe? When is the last time, Grace, you told yourself, breathe, breathe. You find that the only time you are told to breathe, probably, is when you are in distress. Mothers, when you are about to deliver your baby, you will be reminded to breathe. Because I hear, I don't know, the pain that people, the mothers go through, that they forget themselves, that they have to be told by the doctor, breathe, breathe, breathe. But when is the last time, that somebody reminded you, Amy, you need to breathe. Our bodies live, they breathe, and have their being on autopilot while we go about our daily tasks. Now, prayer can also be just as seamless as breathing. It's not something we have to force ourselves to do. It comes naturally. Prayer is the breath of the soul. So that's this morning. I want you to pray and say, Father, change my change my perspective about prayer praying without ceasing can happen in the mind and this morning hallelujah you are entering into this new realm of being able to pray without ceasing it says in the book of romans we were praying earlier today do not conform to the pattern of this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind then you'll be able to test and approve what god's will is is good pleasing and perfect will. Now, would you now with that knowledge, go before the Lord. You have the prayer point now. And say, Father, clear my memory. Ah, Lord, I need you more. Come on, would you pray? Would you pray now? Would you pray? Would you pray? Intentionally, allow no distraction. Pray and tell the Lord, Father, I purpose, I purpose, I purpose not to conform to the pattern of this world. Father, I will not conform to the pattern of this world in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Beloved, we do not wake up and tell ourselves to think. We just do it. And, you know, according to this study by, um, by, the, um, by the American, uh, the National Science Foundation, the average person thinks 12,000 to 60,000 thoughts in a day. Of those, 85% of them are negative. 95% of those thoughts are the same repetitive thoughts from the previous day. Now you can imagine what's happening in your mind. You are still thinking about yesterday. You are still thinking about other things. 95% of those things are negative and they are repetitive. And we don't wake up to tell ourselves what to think. We just do it according to this, this study. And you see, most of what people think about is negative. Even when you are just with people, you want to bless them, they are already thinking something negative about you. What would happen if the majority of those 12,000 to 60,000 thoughts were thoughts and prayers to God? What would you think that would be like? 
How would that radically transform our hearts and minds? This is the reason Paul in Romans 12, 12, 12 2 says, Don't conform to the pattern of this world, but be really transformed by the renewing of your mind. When you think about what's happening in your nation, wherever you are, be it in France, the UK, be it in Kenya, be it in Ghana, be it in Senegal, be it in uh, um, you know, Guinea-Bissau, everywhere in the nations, in Turkey, in, uh, in Israel, all those places, nobody is comfortable with their nation at this time. Everybody, even in America, they are saying Biden something. They are saying something about uh, the president of, of Uganda. They are saying, Yani, there is nowhere on earth today that every person is, comfort is completely comfortable with the leader that is leading their nation. In Congo, in Wapi Wapi. So if you just think about your 12,000 to, to 60,000 thoughts are about confined in your country, in your country. Only your country. Sometimes even some thoughts are just conformed to your village. You find that the pattern of your thinking will not lead you to prayer points. So this morning, I want us to come to the place where we started. The place of contriteness. The place of meekness. The place of prayer. Would you love lift up your voice one more time and pray, my Father, I invite your blood into my mind, into my thoughts. I will not conform any longer to the pattern of this world. I will not conform any longer. Would you pray more? Would you pray more? Tell him, tell him, tell him, tell him, Father. Ah, in a day, averagely, 12,000 to 60,000 thoughts. Lord, 95% of them are just thinking of how things are difficult in the world. Some of them are thinking of how the enemy is advancing, the enemy is doing this, that, that, that. Father, we've become to a place that even sometimes we, it's like we are giving glory to the kingdom of darkness by the things we say. Father, the knowledge that we are pulling ourselves in until we get saturated with the negative and not the positive. Father, we come to thank you because of the atmosphere that is changing, because of the, the capacity of meekness, the capacity of humble heart, the capacity of a contrite heart. My Father, I empty myself of myself. I empty my thoughts. I delete my empty, I delete my recycle bin. I remove every negative thought that is hiding somewhere in my mind, waiting to come up tomorrow. My Father, waiting to come up today. My Father, my God, I pray in the name of Jesus, I will not allow, I will not allow my mind to feel, to begin to, you know, just focus on that which does not glorify God. I will fill my mind with the truth of his word and allow his thoughts to become my thoughts. I will be in such union and connection with the Holy Spirit that I will truly pray without ceasing. Beloved, hallelujah. I just see, I just see someone, you know, like uh, the recycle bin, you know, in a computer, there's something called a recycle bin. In your phone, there's something called junk files that take up so much space. Sometimes you'll not understand why you are keeping junk files in your phone. And if nobody has ever told you how to clear your storage, you'll find that your storage is always limited because of the things that you are putting in your storage. And in this way, that is the digital world. Now, in the spirit realm, the kind of thoughts that we have built up, they will end up building our, 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 our storage in our spirit realm that if we are want to pray, the, it will pray without ceasing, then we must come to the place of emptying that space that tells you, no, 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 you cannot pray more than an hour. You are too tired. Oh, yo, yo, yo. tomorrow, ay, yeah, 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 yeah. tomorrow you are going this, you are doing that. But when you are breathing in the realm of the spirit, hallelujah, your spirit is breathing. Hallelujah! Your spirit is breathing. Hallelujah! It reminds me of the words of Psalm of David in Psalm 139. Psalm 139, verse 17 to 18. It says, How precious to me are your thoughts, God! How vast is the sum of them! Were I to count them, they would outnumber the grains of sand. When I wake, I am still with you. That's May it be your mantra. Begin to tell him now in prayer. 
my father how great are your precious thoughts to me how precious is your thoughts to me lord how precious are your thoughts psalm 139 verse 17 and 18 how precious to me are your thoughts how vast is the sum of them were i to count them they would outnumber the grains of sand when i awake i am still with you my lord father i pray i get this prayer point i mention this prayer point i speak this prayer point in Jesus' name. Beloved, when we lie down and arise with this new day, God is with us. Instead of filling our minds with anxious thoughts and worries about situations in our lives that we cannot control, let's flood our minds with the beautiful thoughts of God. When we delight in His presence and acknowledge that He is with us, when we sit and arise, when we come and go, when he perform our tasks for the day, we are praying without ceasing. Beloved, we are praying without ceasing. Hallelujah. We are praying without ceasing. I want you to pray for yourself and say, Lord, I pray without ceasing in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray without ceasing in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray. I pray without ceasing. I rejoice always. I pray without ceasing in the mighty name the name of Jesus. Amen. Ay, 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 ay. Delight in your presence, Lord. I acknowledge that you are with us, that when we sit, when we arise, when we come and when we go, we don't have to worry what the enemy is doing. We don't have to know what he's doing. But when we perform our task for the day, as we are doing it in line with the word of God, we are praying without ceasing. Hallelujah. <laughs> Let me give you something that happened today. Uh, you know, yesterday. I called a certain phone number of my friend, one of my friends. And it's been a long time since I called them on that line. So when I called... Someone picked on the other side and it was not uh, the voice I was expecting. So the person who I called, they said to me, Where are nani? Then I asked the person, <laughs> I asked the person, uh, Who are you? I'm sorry, I was calling someone. Is this a wrong number? She said, Yes, this is a wrong number. Because I was wondering who you are. Then I said, um, I said, My name is Malcolm David. I am a servant of God. Na mimi niko na uhakika sio wrong number. Ni vile nimepigia rafiki yangu nikapata namba aliwacha ikanunuliwa na Safaricom. Lakini wewe je umeokoka? That was what I asked the person. And funny enough, this person said, "Yes, I am born again." I said, "You know what? God had a plan for us to meet today, so it has come like a wrong number. But I want you to save my number because I am not a wrong number. I am been I've been sent here by the Lord specifically to just encourage you. Nani kamuambia hivyo? And this, beloved, is just how thanks living is about. Thanks giving, thanks living. We must live by giving thanks. There is no moment of regret when we are praying without ceasing. Prayer." is the most intimate and wonderful way we can communicate with God. We can do this silently in our minds while we are driving in our cars, while we are sleeping, when we are doing the dishes, when we are preparing meals, when we are exercising, when we are walking, when we are sitting. This is what we do. We practice the presence of God. Would you now do that in the mighty name of Jesus that you should establish yourselves, you should establish yourself in a sense of God's presence by conversing with him regularly conversing with him oh God Almighty ah I love this Lord let me tell you beloved of God I have seen God lead me into places that I am testifying about because he is the one who can lead me into dangerous places and I get out because it's not by the strength and that's why this prayer meeting is for you to gather prayer points is for you to catch prayer because prayer is not taught. Prayer is caught. Beloved of God, I remember a moment when the Lord would lead me and say, I want you to go and do a prayer watch. And at that time, I had not advertised, any, I had not told anybody that there was going to be a prayer meeting. I would go, start this prayer meeting without anybody in here, and I would pray for one and a half hours. And then when I finish, I continue and go. 
So that is a way to practice when the Lord is allowing you to come to the place of prayer. Practice his presence. Practice his presence. Practice his presence. He will not leave us. Oh, hallelujah. Would you lift your voice and say, my father, I pray that I will pray without ceasing. And I, as I lie, as I wake up, Lord, I pray without ceasing. I pray for help, Holy Spirit, that indeed I will pray through to breakthrough in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus. This day, Lord, I pray through to breakthrough in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray through to breakthrough. Ah, it says, the fear of man will prove to be a snare. The fear of man will prove to be a snare. Who do you fear? If at all you think that you fear about someone, the fear of man will prove to be a snare. The fear of man will prove to be a snare. Proverbs 29 verse 25. It says the fear of man is a snare because man is a false god. But the fear of the Lord is safe because he really is God. Lay aside the fear of man. I want you to pray this morning and say, Father, I lay aside the fear of man in the mighty name of Jesus. I lay aside the fear of man in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray, Lord God, I overcome the fear of man. I overcome the fear of man because he is a false God. But the fear of the Lord, hallelujah, the fear of the Lord is what is calling us to. Beloved, God's promises power from the Holy Spirit to overcome the fear of man and to do what he is calling us to do. Anxiety is a very common problem. It can come with a number of sinful desires. But what has been most troublesome is that the Bible calls the fear of man. We fall into this when we desire the approval of others so that we seek to please them more than God. Ed Welch says, our problem is that we need them for ourselves more than we love them for the glory of God. Beloved of God, fear of man shows up when we share the gospel with others, when we are coaching our children, when we are confronting a patient or a brother in Christ, when we speak in front of people or when we make decisions, this type of anxiety hinders the service of God in many areas of our lives. Solomon tells us that fear of man will prove to be a snare. I want you to pray right now and tell the Lord, Father, I will not fear man. I will not fear man. I arise. I arise. I arise from anxiety. I arise from the fear of man. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I will not worry what they will say. I will not worry what they will do. Lord, as you have proved yourself many times over, it is not about what you have said. It is not about what they have said. It's about what you have said, my Father. So God, this morning, we align ourselves to your purposes and plans. And God, we decree and declare that there there is no weapon fashioned against us that shall prosper. This day we pull down the fear of man. <clears throat> In the name of Jesus. Beloved, we have to overcome the fear of man by trusting in the Lord. This is essentially a call to believe in, rely on, and please the Lord in all that we do. Paul helps us understand the mindset of of one who pleases the Lord. Galatians chapter 1 verse 10. Oh, I love this combination. Wow, this is a seven course meal. Galatians chapter 1 verse number 10. Galatians chapter 1 and verse number 10. Beautiful scripture. Wonderful, wonderful being directed by Paul. He says, am I now trying to win the approval of men or of God? Or am I trying to please men? If I was still trying to please men, I would not be a servant of Christ. This is it all. Hallelujah, as my Nigerian brother would say. If you are trying to win the approval of men and not of God, you will not be a servant of Christ. You will be a servant of men. And I want to tell you, beloved, even the fear of your siblings, the fear of your, your parents, the fear of your boss, the fear, the fear of your landlord, the fear, the fear, the fear of your boss, of your, of your client, the fear, any type of fear, 
will prove to be a snare. This morning, we also want, as we come to a close, to pray for the nation of Kenya and also the nations of the earth because, like I mentioned, the world is full of many troubles. The world economy has nothing to do with how prosperous we will be. Our mindset and how we position ourselves in God will determine how our economics will be and whether we'll be prosperous or not. Beloved of God, as we pray for the nations, we want to bring our citizens, our friends, our brothers to the hands of the Lord because it does not make sense. I saw a clip from northern Nigeria. Some of those rebels just walked into the streets and started shooting people for no reason. They just started shooting, shooting, shooting. And you notice that this is not in only one place. In Somalia, the testimonies of, of the persecuted church in that place. The moment the person, there's one sheikh who was sharing that he gave his life to Christ, they killed all his children. And then they came to kill him. But the Lord Jesus Christ intervened and he did not die. So these are testimonies that if you are in a country where the, the, the gospel is being preached easily, you may not know that there is a place where it is being bought by blood. Blood. People are dying because of this gospel. And when we are coming here, we should not fear. We should not fear what men are going to do. Beloved, as we conclude also, we also want to thank God for Sister Jeanette who is here. Uh, from uh, North Carolina, we continue to thank God for that prayer point about uh, about your dad, and also we trust God that God is able to heal. God is able to heal stroke, cancer, AIDS, any kind of sickness and disease, and able to replace any kind of uh, organ, any kind of circumstance. God is able to extend even life. God is able to do exceedingly, including creating eyes for the blind, including straightening out limbs for them that have been broken limbs, them that have died, is able to resurrect them. The fear of man will prove to be a snare. Let's pray in agreement in the name of Jesus. Mighty Father, we are grateful for the direction you've led us tonight and we are thankful for bringing order into our time. Father God, we want to thank you for helping us. We want to thank you for the session coming up at three in the morning we trust you that god it's only you who can help us to wake lord god as we rise oh god even to pray at that hour may you give us strength father we know this is a time of sacrifice and it's not a time of convenience lord we pray for the nations we pray for kenya specifically that lord even as a people we will look to you and your strength not look for uh, for the president to take down um, the price of anything because God, even in the days of Second Kings, we saw that it was a man of God, Elisha, who spoke and changed the cost of living in Israel. Father God, we pray, according to your word in John 16, 33, that in this world you will have many troubles, but be of good cheer, because I overcame the world. We purpose to receive strength from you, our God. We purpose to receive health from you, our God. We purpose to receive fire, even upon our altars. So, Father, we pray for these prayer points that we have brought before you, according to Galatians 1.10, that we will not seek the approval of men. We will not seek the up to please men. Because if we were still trying to please men, we would not be servants of Christ. Father, we pray this morning that, Lord, let your purposes be advanced. And that, Lord, this day you give us victory. Lord, as we come back again at 3 in the morning, we know that it is only you who can give the grace and capacity. We thank you for vision. We thank you for provision. We thank you for strength. We thank you for capacity. Our Father and our God, we commit each one of us here present. We thank you for healing. We thank you for healing. We only think healing. Father, as we have learned about the number of thoughts that cross in our minds, 20,000 to 60,000. We pray that we will have a huge percentage of your word in us. That when we lie down, we will not be afraid. When we lie down, our sleep will be sweet. My Father, we thank you and we glorify your holy and wonderful name. Father, we bless you. We honor you at this gate of time. Father God, we pray that we will conquer any spirit of timidity. And that, Father, we ask you that even from this moment on, 
that you arise on behalf of our family oh lord arise like a warrior and destroy all our adversaries in the mighty name of jesus in this midnight hour destroy them all and father in the morning when we wake up we shall have answers to prayer as we come to the fourth watch of the night our father we bless you and we honor you for we have asked this in the mighty name of our lord jesus christ amen beloved we have come to the end of this session and we will be back at 3 a.m to 1 40. that's a longer session uh we are going to pray more as the lord enables us let's give uh let's share in the words of the grace <clears throat> and now may the grace lord jesus christ and the love of god and the fellowship of the holy spirit be with us now and forevermore amen amen shalom 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 Thank you, Grace Gishoro and Sarah Gikinya on Facebook for joining. We will see you at 3 a.m. You can still come back to the link if you want to join by Google Meet. Shalom.